Behind the Kiss. Behind the Magic. Sweet Aurora, I wish for you the gift of beauty. Behind the Legend of Sleeping Beauty. I too shall bestow a gift on the child. Lies the story of Maleficent. Curious little beastie. Bring her to me. I know you're there. Don't be afraid. I am not afraid. Then come out. Then you'll be afraid. This summer... Aurora, there is an evil in this world. And I cannot keep you from it. Disney's greatest villain... to life. How wonderful. Maleficent. What was that? Oh, boy. I, I really don't know quite what to say about that trailer. The tone has totally surprised me. Uh, I see a lot of you are very excited about this second trailer. Uh, I can't quite get a bead on if you're excited about it or, you know, uh, as surprised as I am. Uh, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade. I've rained on the Frozen Parade a whole lot, so it makes me a little scared. But I have to honestly say that uh, this looks bad. This makes me fear for the future of the live-action uh, animated fairy tale. Uh, and this is a crucial point for it because it really needs to rebound. Alice in, the, Alice in Wonderland, Alice in the Wonderland, Alice in Wonderland, uh, made a billion dollars and really set off this whole trend. Uh, you know, way back, I believe, it was 2010. But then Snow White and the Huntsman uh, really only about broke even, so did Oz the Great and Powerful. Uh, not a lot of money is coming in here, but I think everybody feels that they'll get the next Alice in Wonderland. And, you know, I think that Disney's hoping that it will be the case with Maleficent. But maybe, maybe this was cut to go in front of the nut job. I'm not quite sure why this trailer was released this weekend. Uh, but that's the only reason I can assume that was to play in front of that film. And that's a film that skews very young. So I guess you could argue that Maleficent, this trailer is cut to skew very young. <clears throat> However, the fact that you could cut a trailer that skews very young from the film at all is a really big uh, red flag for me. Uh, now, Angelina Jolie was going around telling everybody that she was scaring children on set, you know, at the D23 Expo. Uh, but she, maybe she was scaring children on set, but she didn't scare me at all here. I was expecting, you know, I thought the whole point of doing these, you know, adult live action fairy tales was to put an interesting, more sophisticated twist on them. To take simple stories, you know, fairy tales, and to give them more psychological depth. Uh, I think that's the reason Charlize Theron's Evil Queen worked the best out of Snow White and the Huntsman. Everything else kind of was like just, you know, white noise. Uh, but her, her depiction of the Evil Queen and the fear she had of growing old and rejection, you know, uh, youth, how important youth can be perceived for women in particular, uh, I thought really worked there and was fascinating to behold and I think what was the core strength of that film and why it, any money it, it made at all can be accounted to that. And I thought they were going to explore something similar here. But, in, you know, it's like you don't, you don't change the fairy tale. You, like, you, you deepen and strengthen its roots. You know, you, you, it's almost like Sigmund Freud's fairy tales, I guess, to some degree. Uh, but instead, I, I'm seeing something here that looks more like Enchanted the Amy Adams film. Now, of course, it has its fan base. It didn't make a billion dollars. But if you're going to make a movie like that, similar to Enchanted, you know, Susan Sarandon played the evil Maleficent-like villain there, and she was, a, she was good. But why would you pick Academy Award winner Angelina Jolie, who was famous for wearing, you know, a blood vial around her neck. She was the other woman who broke up Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt. I mean, she's really cultivated an image that you would think that, you know, they could have used to their advantage to play this evil character. But if you're going to have Angelina Jolie be all bright and happy, it's as off-putting, I feel, as Maleficent being all bright and happy. 
Now, maybe she's trying to trick Aurora. I don't know. I don't know the subtext. You know, I'm so surprised to see this because I really have so much faith in the screenwriters, for instance, Linda Wolverton and Paul Dini. Linda Wolverton wrote Beauty and the Beast, the animated movie. She wrote the Alice in Wonderland that did so well. And Paul Dini, of course, as we all know, is uh, a genius when it comes to writing comic book characters for animation and particularly female characters. So you would think that I don't understand how this could have come from them unless, you know, the studio notes were so pervasive and insistent they're just stuck. But uh, I don't, and I also think to cut in pictures from the animated movie, besides the fact that it's very hard to compete with the animated movie, that's such a fantastic classic piece of animation that itself was uh, sophisticated for Disney. Uh, not only does it do it any favors in that regard, but it makes me feel, why do I need to see the movie? Is this just a straight adaptation? Are you not even going to, like, you know, it's just but from Maleficent's side, but it's also for small children. You know, I w but I would say the original Sleeping Beauty wasn't for small children. It had dark aspects to it, very good animation, and even the, the art style was very sophisticated. You know, Ivan Earl did that and, uh, you know, did something that was, you know, not super realistic or fairy tale like but, you know, had some artistic credibility to it. Uh, you know, beyond just animation, you know, from the art world. So I don't see any of that here. I don't see even, you know, I don't see any artistic sophistication, which is very disappointing coming from Robert Stromberg. I don't see any sophisticated acting coming from Angelina Jolie. And I don't see any sophisticated uh, screenwriting coming from Linda Wolverton and Paul Dini. I find that very hard to believe. But then, how can my eyes deceive me? I just hope this is a really poorly cut trailer. And I think they need to bury it as soon as possible. It even almost seems fan-made, just the quality is so poor. And after that first trailer, which was very exciting and had like a Joan Crawford kind of feel to it, a little over the top like Joan Crawford was sometimes, but, you know, exciting and very melodramatic that maybe it could, you know, uh, find its niche that way. But here, uh, I don't know. I'm just like, when Angelina Jolie says, I have a gift for the child too, I'm just kind of, it was just, I was just dumbstruck that they would be like, okay, we got it, moving on. I'd be like, we need to do another take because that's just a disaster. But I, how do you guys feel? I mean, I'm expecting a dark fairy tale. Maybe for fans out there who, you know, liked Enchanted, this is exactly what you want. What's your reaction to this trailer? You know, and I caution you again, um, just because I don't like something doesn't mean you don't have to like it. This is just my opinion on it. And I, I just, I feel from a box office perspective though, I think if this is what the movie is like, I worry how they're going to get somebody who doesn't have small children or is just a huge hardcore Disney fan into the theater. I don't know. I worked with Frozen. But um, this is just, I'm just completely shocked. All right, so write your thoughts down below. Thank you for everybody who pointed this trailer out to me. I got a lot of tweets for it yesterday. I appreciate it. when you guys see a trailer, you think of me. Uh, and uh, I look forward to reading your comments below.